So today we're talking Adeptus Custodius Shield hosts and which one to pick in Warhammer 40k right now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're back for another Custodius video, and this time we're going to be talking about their new and revamped shield hosts, both in terms of lore and background and in-game rules. We'll go through each one in turn, look at their differences in the lore, colour scheme and in-game rules, and talk about which ones are strongest in the game right now. In the background, the shield hosts of the Adeptus Custodius work a little bit differently to a fair few of the organisations of the other armies. As the Emperor's own legion, the Custodius are generally a fairly homogenous force, but individual shield hosts are formed or broken up as needed, several of which having one specific duty in mind, or a certain goal that they've set out to achieve outside in the galaxy. Typically one commander will preside over several different shield companies within the host, sometimes they might fight together as a colossal force, other times the individual shield companies, or even individual units, will be dispatched to do the Emperor's bidding alone. Compared with a lot of the other command structures in other armies of 40k, the custodians have a lot of autonomy, every single one being a paragon of the Emperor's will. Their commanders and sub-commanders are expected to think on their feet, solve problems and deliver conflict, all without having to check back in with command on a regular basis. In return for this privilege though, nothing besides excellence is expected for a Custodes commander. In game, when you're playing Custodes, you get to have a shield host for your army to be drawn from. They do have their own slight subtleties and differences from the colour schemes, but in general Custodes are one of the armies where people aren't really going to know the difference too much between the different shield hosts. The majority of people aren't going to recognise the difference between an Aquilan shield and a Dread host Custodes, so there's maybe a bit more flexibility with chopping and changing between different tactics if you do want to try something out. The colour scheme differences just really aren't as well known as say things like Space Marines, where you might easily be able to tell the difference between an Ultramarine and a Blood Angel perhaps. In any case, if you're chosen shield host you get a fighting style for all units, this one gets you two different bonuses like a chapter tactic, you get access to one stratagem, relic and warlord trait, all of which you can make use of or completely ignore as you choose, and then each of the six shield hosts has a martial guitar that they get to use two parts of once per game, so you get one turn of double benefits, usually followed by another turn of one of your favourite benefits out of those two. It is quite powerful, and can certainly give you a leg up in a certain phase. Finally, in addition to that, unlike many other armies, the special characters aren't tied to any particular shield host individually, so you could field Trajan Valoris or Valerian in any of them. They still get the fighting style, and it's pretty nice to get easy access to those. In any case, let's go through the shield hosts individually, and talk about what they have to offer. So first up, and greatest of the shield hosts, are the Emperor's Chosen. These guys basically represent the core of the Custodius army, all of the Custodians not assigned to specific duties within the other hosts, and the core of the Adeptus Custodius residing on Terra and guarding the Emperor. Their rules could also be used to represent multiple companies of the Adeptus Custodius all fighting together, as they are first and foremost manifestations of the Emperor's will above all their other duties. Their colour scheme is basically the one that you see on all the box art, your standard gold custodians, often with some red trim. In game, the Emperor's Chosen are perhaps the most powerful of any of the shield companies. Their fighting style gives them a nice damage output increase, be rolling either one hit or wound roll each time a unit shoots or fights. That one's very, very nice with things like Virtus Praetors and those devastating salvo launchers. And they also get a 4 plus feel no pain type save against mortal wounds, a really big defensive buff against a mechanic that's becoming more and more prevalent in 40k. These guys are definitely going to have a big leg up compared with some of the others if they happen to be fighting things like Grey Knights or Thousand Suns. Their Warlord trait is a combat orientated one, you get an extra attack per each model slain to a maximum of 4, so it is generally going to help them out a bit more against light infantry than it does against things like characters, still though not a terrible one for just increasing their raw might. Their relic's a Guardian Spear with an extra plus 1 strength and an extra AP minus 2 in melee, I think that's very passable to be honest, not as good as quite a lot of the other book relics but their stratagem is maybe one of the single best reasons to take them, as it's just really, really flexible. For 1 CP each turn in your command phase, one of your custodies units gets to swap out its fighting style for any one of the other shield companies. We will be going through the others, but there's some really quite powerful things that could be good situationally. You can get one for ignores modifiers if you need it, fall back and charge, ignoring AP minus 1, better AP and re-rolling charges, and minus 1 to attack for enemies and re-rolling wounds against characters. That's really a huge array of options that you can put down just for one command point on a unit, and some of those could be situationally amazing. Say if you do just need a unit to just absolutely kill a character, that's well worth it. Or if you've got a squad that desperately needs to be charging something else, then falling back in charge could be great as well. Between the stratagem and their fighting style, it really does put them above quite a lot of the rest. 
Finally, their favoured martial katar is quite a useful one as well. Rendax is the one that makes you better against monsters and vehicles. And getting a couple of turns of auto wounding on sixes could be a pretty big deal against armoured lists. In general, I think it's kind of hard to go wrong with the Emperor's Chosen. Their rerolls are perhaps particularly good with the bikes and those salvo launchers. And they do seem to be the shield host that most people are playing competitively these days. The vast majority of tournament custodies lists tend to be Emperor's Chosen. Certainly a solid standard custodies pick if none of the others take your fancy. Next up we have the White Armoured Custodians of the Solar Watch. This shield host is sworn to protect the outline defences of the Sol system, maintaining the many orbital stations and bastions that are scattered throughout. It's their job to be constantly vigilant for approaching threats, and are renowned for striking swiftly and mercilessly, not waiting for the bastions to be assailed, but instead striking out hard against the enemy approaching forces to utterly destroy formations before they arrive. I believe that there's some background about them attacking an orc war before it makes the jump into the warp, strike teams planting bombs on each of the key cruisers and teleporting away to safety before destroying much of the fleet in a cataclysmic explosion. In game they're aiming to be one of the speediest of the custodians hosts, their warriors get plus one to advance and charge and could also fall back and charge from engagement range. The advance thing will make them a little bit more mobile as they're moving about. The charge thing is always quite handy for trying to get your close combat units into melee and it's particularly quite nice out of deep strike giving you an 8 inch charge rather than a 9. On top of that their warlord trait can make one infantry unit move really quite quickly indeed allowing one core infantry unit to advance and charge so taken in tandem with those plus one bonuses that's to be a very long threat range indeed. Their standard foot custodians would be odds on to make charges over 18 inches away at the start of your turn. Their relic is a guardian spear with an extra AP minus one. It allows the bearer to fall back, shoot and charge. Again, I'd say that's not particularly outstanding, particularly as you can already fall back and charge anyway. And their stratagem is kind of fun, but a bit niche. One CP for when you kill the enemy warlord. The entire enemy army gets minus one to combat attrition tests. It's just not going to come up too much in a lot of games. If you're killing the enemy warlord, you're doing quite well already. You might not kill them unless it's towards the end of the game anyway, and a lot of armies just don't really care about combat attrition tests, say most space marines. Finally, their martial katar is again the speedy one, faster advances, getting to re-roll them, and also advance and shoot. Again, I guess that could really all come into effect on one big unit of custodian guard with spears perhaps, use the warlord trait on them, advance them, still shoot with their guardian spears, and then still be able to charge after that with a plus one. In general, I think the Solar Watch are going to be better off with any of the slow-moving Custodes units, Infantry and Dreadnoughts in particular, where if you're moving quite slowly already, even a small boost to the speed is pretty helpful. It's quite nice with any Deep Strikers as well. If you can budget a Command reroll, an 8-inch charge with a reroll is really quite good. It gives you around about a two-third chance of making the charge overall. Overall, despite this, I would say that Solar Watch is probably one of the weaker shield companies. The fighting style and the Warlord trade are both quite good but I'm a bit less overwhelmed by the other ones. Still though, could be another quite interesting way to play Custodes, very speedy foot guys. Next up we have the Emissaries Imperatus. These guys are the voice of the Emperor, and deliver the most important messages, precious artifacts, and Imperial decrees to war zones in peril. They're one of the shield hosts that venture out into the wider galaxy a lot more than the rest. Much of the shield hosts accompanied Rebute Gilliman on his Indomitus Crusade, and in battle they often make good use of swift moving units such as Virtus Praetors. In game their fighting style is called Heralds of the Throne, it allows them to fight first in combat and ignore all modifiers to hit and wound both at range and in melee. Fight first is one of those advantages that is maybe a bit underwhelming. If the enemy only charges you with one charging unit then that charging unit will still get to be selected first, but if they multi-charge quite a lot of your squads it might essentially grant you kind of a free interrupt. It's also really quite good for protracted combats as well. Being able to hit the enemy before they hit you is quite a nice advantage. The ignoring modifiers thing is really good too. Maybe a touch more situational, and in general custodians do tend to hit on twos anyway, so are quite resistant to modifiers. But certainly against some units it's really good, say for example Bellicor from the Chaos Demons, with minus one to hit and wound. Their Warlord trait is an aura boosting one. It adds three inch range to their aura abilities, and gives them plus one leadership out to nine inches too. Getting Shield Captain rerolls to go a bit further is kind of handy, could be good on those Vexillas. Leadership boost is kind of underwhelming, seeing as Custodians are already Leadership 11 anyway. Their Relic is the Halo of the Torchbearer, and that gives you a 3 inch aura of ignoring any movement penalties, plus the chance to deal a few mortal wounds in combat. Again, like quite a few of the other Relics so far, it really isn't the best I think. Really though, I think the single biggest thing for these guys is their Stratagem for 2 or 3 CP. 
which allows you to do a pre-game move with one core unit. This would be just amazing on Virtus Praetors, jump them up into somewhere out of line of sight in the middle of the board, and then with their enormous 14 inch movement, they should hopefully near guarantee a charge on something important on your turn 1. Certainly very intimidating to have golden jet bikes flying into the army so early in the game. Then Marshal Qatar is called Conservi, this one gives easier actions, and to be honest I think it's perhaps one of the worst. If you're doing actions, then maybe things like the Sisters of Silence might be better. In general, I think a fair few of their buffs are kind of useful on a lot of things. I think if I was running these though, then a big unit of versus Prey Tours would be a must, just for the enormous body blow of a first turn charge with them. Overall, I'd say that they're probably a medium to weaker Custodes Shield company. Their trait is pretty underwhelming to be honest, but I think their Warlord trait is quite useful, and that first turn stratagem is really, really big. Again, could be another flavour of Custodes to try and hit the enemy before they hit you. Next up, we come to the Aquilan Shield, a shield company that's often assigned to protect certain key individuals throughout the Imperium, notable people who Terra want to preserve the lives of, but deem are at high risk. Small forces of Aquilan's Shield Custodes might be dispatched to defend these key individuals, appearing unbidden but gratefully received, and disappearing equally quickly when the Custodes feel that the person has achieved their useful purpose and is no longer deemed worthy of their protection. Due to this nature, it often means that the Aquilan Shield will operate as allies to larger Imperial forces, or typically take to the field in smaller companies. If your Custodes hail from the Aquilan Shield, their fighting style is that they ignore attacks with AP-1, it instead becomes AP-0, so you're likely to get your 2 plus saves against them, and every single unit in the army can perform a heroic intervention if the enemy does wind up within 3 inches of them at the end of their charge phase. The AP thing is kind of useful but also pretty situational, some armies will have loads of that, some armies will have next to none, and the heroic intervention thing will be really good, but the one thing that makes it less so is that there's one command point stratagem that allows basically any custodies unit to do it anyway. So even if you are playing one of the shield companies, it means that for one CP, you can essentially have the same advantage of the Aquilan shield on the times when you need it most. It just means that these guys are going to be fairly overshadowed. Their warlord trait and relic are kind of okay. The warlord trait allows you to half damage rounding up. Certainly makes the big high wound shield captains a lot tougher. Sometimes it's going to be better than that superior creation one for a 5 plus feel no pain, but a lot of the time it's going to be worse. I think they're fairly well balanced. Their relic is a Presidium Shield, which would mean it would have to go on the standard shield captain, and that makes it minus one to wound the bearer. Again, really quite a nice defensive buff, that could combine well with either this Warlord trait or Superior Creation. I still don't think it's going to be taken loads though. There's a lot of other good choices in the book, and particularly so for the Jet Bag and the Terminator shield captains. Their stratagem is a one command point bodyguard rule that makes an Imperium character within six inches non-targetable. Certainly one of the rules that has some of the most potential for abuse in 40k. It does have to be an infantry character, so you can't apply it to monsters or vehicles, but it can allow for some very silly shenanigans, such as having a commander stand on an objective 6 inches away from one of your Aquilan Shield units. That Aquilan Shield unit could completely be hidden from line of sight, and it could still stop your character from being shot. The extra range is quite nice, it means that they can be even more powerful than the Custodian Wardens for this. Finally, their Marshal Qatar is perhaps one of the best ones, the Salvas Qatar gives you plus 4 inch range on your shooting, but more importantly, it can give you shooting twice with any auric weapons that you happen to have. So basically, if you're taking the Aquilan Shield, I'd certainly want to be loading up on quite a lot of the standard Custodes units. Guardian Spears and Castellan Axes shooting twice is going to leave a mark, particularly when backed up by a charge. Overall, again, I'd say they're probably one of the shield companies that's kind of medium to weaker. The heroic inventions are handy, though a little bit eclipsed by the stratagem. I'd say the biggest attractions in game to the Aquilan Shield are double shooting Auric weapons two turns in a row, and potentially some dodgy bodyguard shenanigans, allowing you to secure some objectives really far away while standing out in the open. Plus they do have some jazzy purple robes as well, which certainly doesn't hurt. Next up we have the fearsome and destructive Dreadhost. These guys are basically the Emperor's Retribution made manifest, a brutal force of golden executioners, Dispatched to behead nascent threats to the Imperium, which might grow into something nastier. Punish a traitor to mankind, or bloody the nose of a powerful foe. The Dreadhost are direct in their approach, not just aiming to bring down their targets, but to do so in such a brutal and shocking way, that any others who dare to emulate them might think again, lest they fear the Emperor's justice in a similar way. The Dreadhost are well known for their Terminators, and teleport tactics into battle, and have a particular favour for Castellan Axes. 
In-game, as you might expect, this really does manifest just in more direct damage and getting into the fight even faster. Dreadhost units get all their weapons boosted by AP-1 against units within 9 inches. Good on their melee weapons, though in general Custodia's melee weapons tend to be okay already. If anything, this is just as important on their shooting. Things like Guardian Spears or Volume Fire getting a bit better when they have more AP. They also reroll charge rolls as well. That can be pretty handy for jumping out of Deep Strike and just making sure that a few more combats happen without having to worry about command rerolls quite so much. Their Warlord trait is a command ability for some direct damage as well. One core unit nearby gets exploding sixes to hit. That's generally going to equate to an extra 20% damage boost, but that could still be worth it if you've got really quite a big Custodies unit to buff. Their Relic is one of the ways that you can make one of the fightiest Custodies characters around. A damage 3, AP-3, Castellan Axe seems pretty excellent on a foot commander. Their stratagem for 2 CP is Golden Light of the Moirades. One teleported unit gets minus one to hit and gets to ignore overwatch or set to defend when it charges in. For me, I feel that this was toned down a bit compared with the previous version. It only applies to one unit now, and ignoring overwatch is all well and good, but you're still only going to have around about a 50% chance of making that charge, even with the reroll. Finally though, their Katar de Katarai is potentially useful. That's the one that both gives you extra attacks against horde units if you need it, and also this messes with the enemy piling in and consolidating both of which could be really quite good if you're fighting enemies with big units. In general though, the Dread Host is usually going to be good with melee units and low AP shooting. Things like Terminators or Wardens with Castellan Axes seem like really good choices, and the extra AP thing might even consider you to run some Hurricane Bolters on the Virtus Praetors, as opposed to the standard Salvo launchers. All the various buffs on offer certainly don't hurt melee shield captains either. That damage 3 axe is incredibly powerful. Overall, I'd say that Dread Host are one of the stronger shield hosts, Generally useful extra damage output, reliable charges, and a pretty good relic. I think it does put them a fair bit above several of the rest. Besides that, their background is some of the most fun out of any of them. A host of golden destroyers sent out to obliterate mankind's greatest foes. Finally, last but by no means least, we have the Shadow Keepers. Sinister black armoured custodians who watch over the dark cells below the Imperial Palace, guardians of the dread entities and important prisoners within. They only rarely venture forth into the wider galaxy but often they are dispatched with a specific individual in mind, aimed to capture an enemy warlord, and convey them back to the Imperial Palace for whichever purpose, whether imprisonment, interrogation, or something more sinister. In-game, these brooding watchers really are quite powerful. Their shield host fighting style gives them really quite a nice melee defensive boost, with enemy units getting minus one attacks when they're within engagement range. Really quite nice for any fighter unit that does have two or three attacks, that's going to be a massive blow to how much they're going to do to you. As well as that, they just get to reroll wound rolls against characters with every single unit. Obviously that isn't going to apply to much of the enemy army, but whenever it does come up, that's quite a powerful rule. Really good against the enemy's heroes, and it's going to be quite important against a lot of other key units as well. A lot of things do have the character keyword, whether it's Imperial Knights, or Kill Rigs, Demon Primarchs, or Imperial Guard Tank Commanders. Particularly whenever you're going to be shooting one of those units, it's going to have quite a nice impact. To double down on being able to take out characters, their Warlord trait Lock Warden allows them to ignore invul saves against characters. That one just seems like it's excellent on something like a Virtus Praetor Captain. A really long threat range to allow you to actually engage the character. Reroll wound roll so the vast majority of your attacks go through. Decent AP, and then you hopefully take them down in a single combat phase. Their relic is also pretty awesome as well. One unit with an engagement range fights last this turn. A hugely powerful ability to help you dominate the fight phase, stop the enemy interrupting, and it's even really quite good in defence as well, as Custodes characters can heroic intervene up to 6 inches if they pay a 1 command point stratagem. It means it could be potentially very hard to engage a custodian unit nearby a character and not have them heroic intervene into them with this. The good news just keeps on coming because their stratagem is also good too. 1 command point for a nice defensive buff, enemy attacks get minus 1 strength, it doesn't work on vehicles, but say if you're having your custodian shot by a whole load of strength 5 weapons that are usually wound them on 4s, knocking that down to wounding them on 5s is a really big deal. Finally, their Martial Katara I think is at least somewhat useful. Perhaps the best advantage of Captaris is the chance to prevent enemy falling back. Getting 2 turns of that could be pretty handy against the right army. Potentially charge something, kill them, and then consolidate into something that really doesn't want to be in combat. Having a chance to prevent them falling back and then forcing you to fight them in their own phase could be really quite nice. Overall, I think that Shadow Keepers are the other really, really powerful shield company. People generally seem to be preferring the Emperor's Chosen over them, but I really don't think that these guys are all that far behind. The chap who came second at the Las Vegas Open did choose to use these. Their fighting style's okay. 
but their Wardour trait Relic and Stratagem are all super usable, as is their Martial Guitar. Definitely a very competitive one, could be another interesting one to try out. So that just about brings us to the end of our review of the 6 Custodies Shield host. Let me know which one is your favourite and why down in the comments below, and feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see more like this, I'll hopefully have a few more Custodies videos on the way. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.